Hi, everyone, again. Uh, this is Kathy Wood from ARK Invest. Uh, I guess this is the fifth week we've done this. Uh, so I hope, uh, I hope you're all doing well and uh, that the markets are treating you well. Uh, so as we've done in, in past weeks, just going over the past week and, uh, and summarizing uh, the points that we thought were quite relevant, uh, we'll start with uh, monetary policy, then fiscal policy. Uh, then we'll go through some really interesting economic statistics. And, and then we'll talk a little bit about the markets. Uh, so um, on monetary policy, what's very interesting is uh, last week, it may have been, this may be the third week, the Fed has dialed down uh, the rate at which it's buying securities in the market. And so that what that tells us is the Fed is feeling better, that the markets are working. And, um, and that's a very good thing. Uh, uh, Jerome Powell, I think, scored a lot of points with investors and others uh, uh, when he um, gave uh, his presentation this week. And uh, I think he's basically saying, look, we're here for you. We're here for you. The most important thing is that the markets are functioning smoothly. Uh, uh, we've got your back, in other words, which is um, obviously reassuring to a lot of people. On the fiscal policy side, um, the, what we're learning more and more uh, about these programs is they are leaning more towards loans, which will have to be repaid, than grants, with the exception of PPP, the Payment Protection Plan. Uh, and, and so from a fiscal point of view, uh, fiscal discipline point of view, uh, that's good. Um, they're also focusing on the mistakes that they've made and they're, they are catching some fraud. So again, fiscal policymakers are comfortable enough with what's going on out there right now to, um, to start addressing uh, those problems. I do believe still that if the economy does not get back to uh, business, as quickly uh, uh, as possible when the health, uh, health concerns are clear, that we will see a payroll tax holiday. Uh, just before I began, began recording this uh, video, uh, the administration came out and said they want to start uh, to talk about the next stimulus package immediately. Uh, and I do believe this, uh, this payroll protection uh, program might be uh, in, in, the, um, in the next stimulus package. Uh, as far as the economy, we got some really interesting insights uh, from a number of statistics this week. Uh, so in the personal income uh, report, we saw that uh, incomes had dropped 2% uh, sequentially. So that's quite a big drop. That's a, when you annualize it, 24% uh, plus. Um, but consumption was down so much more, seven and a half percent. And again, that's not annualized. Uh, what we also saw is the saving rate shot up to 13 percent. And if we are right about the trends in April, it could be that the saving rate uh, could top 20 percent. This is record breaking nowhere in in records that I've seen. Uh, has there been in the United States a saving rate of 20%? Uh, so that's an incredibly large cushion out there to absorb uh, some of the shocks uh, from the economy. Uh, we also saw in the GDP report something interesting, uh, another clue, uh, and that was that inventories liquidated in the first quarter. Now, uh, if you've been listening to, uh, to, to this uh, stay-at-home series, uh, you'll know that we've been very focused on uh, the disconnect between consumers and businesses before uh, the coronavirus hit. And uh, what we saw was the consumer was spending a pace, uh, very strong, uh, and uh, feeling really good, record-breaking, consumer confidence stats. Uh, well, consumer confidence has taken a big hit uh, for sure, but business confidence was already so low uh, because of the China-US trade conflict and the inverted yield curve last year uh, that um, 
we saw businesses actually liquidating uh, inventories. This shock in in terms of consumption in March uh, was not enough to um, to to cause a backup, a big backup in inventories. That's very interesting. One of the reasons a recession uh, lasts so long is just out of control inventories. There was uh, businesses either speculating too much and building in inventories way in advance of consumption, particularly if they're expected, expecting prices to go up and the consumer not showing up. Uh, uh, so we were in the flip side of that, I think, before the uh, coronavirus. And that inventory number, uh, I believe, is very important. Uh, and I'm sure the inventory liquidation in the second quarter will be um, will be even more dramatic. Well, this is the kind of phenomenon that sets up uh, a V-shaped recovery. If the consumer reappears, comes back, and we are seeing signs that that already is happening, uh, then businesses are going to have to scramble to start back up and uh, keep up with consumption. Uh, and if, if one business, business doesn't want to do it, another one will. And so I think you'll see animal spirits and the competitive dynamics associated with our um, economy come back in a big way. We may be seeing the beginnings of that in China already, could be a harbinger uh, of what's to come. Uh, in terms of the, the areas of the economy that have been hit really hard, uh, uh, airlines and autos, um, we're seeing a few interesting statistics. They're very early and, and we know now that the base is very low. So airline, um, travel dropped 95 percent uh to so i believe we bottomed at uh 95 yes 95,000 uh passengers per day in um in uh at, at the low so that would have been in late march early april we're now up to 125,000 passengers per day so there are people out there who are saying i gotta i have to take this trip and again, one uh, competitive force may lead to another. If, there, if this is business travel uh, and business is restarting, uh, then um, competition will force others to follow. It, it could be more personal travel. We just don't know. Uh, in the autos, auto sector, we have really bad news and, uh, and, and some good news. Uh, the, the really bad news is that used car prices are falling apart here. And one of the reasons they are is because um, companies like Hertz and Avis are uh, selling their cars into the used market at fire sale prices because they are in real trouble, dire trouble. Uh, Hertz has missed interest payments on its bonds and is looking to restructure, which probably means bankruptcy. Uh, and uh, Avis may not be far behind. I don't know. So that's a real pressure. If you're thinking about buying a car and the competition is, uh, is a used car where the prices have just dropped, uh, you know, they're, let's say 25%. It could be something crazy like that. Um, that's a lot of competition for new cars, which is uh, problematic. Uh, if we look at the first quarter statistics in autos, uh, just to give you a sense, and this is before uh, this is before uh, the U.S. was really hit in a big way, but China was um, was already being impacted quite significantly. I think uh, total auto sales globally. We're down uh, more than 25%, uh, with China down 31%, North America down 13%. Uh, I'll just throw in uh, a, another fact here because we just got uh, these numbers recently. Um, Tesla sales were up 40%. Uh, Tesla is supply constrained. Uh, it's a very different, in a very different world from uh, other auto manufacturers which are now actually putting, many of them uh, are putting some of their electric vehicle 
and autonomous vehicle projects on hold and they're cutting their dividends and they are in harm's way. Uh, so we believe that uh, Tesla, uh, which is very healthy, in fact, its balance sheet looks like a fortress now compared to the balance sheets we're seeing uh, at, the, at some of the major auto manufacturers. Um, Tesla is going to have lots more room to gain a lot of share, uh, much more than we ever e expected it would. Um, so so that's, that's the good news. Uh, in Germany, it seems like the German auto manufacturers are not going to hold back on uh, their electric vehicle plans. And I believe that um, President Merkel in Germany has scheduled a meeting next week with the auto manufacturers because that is such an important industry uh, for Germany. I think they're, uh, they're going to take advantage of this situation, with perhaps with government's help, uh, to push uh, even more quickly into the electric vehicle world than might otherwise have been the case. Uh, and uh, from a competitive point of view, uh, they'll probably have an edge over uh, some of the uh, US and other auto manufacturers, uh, though not Tesla, of course, because Tesla is so far ahead in this game. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the reason uh, used car prices are so important to the, uh, to the new car market is not, not just the competition, but 90% uh, of all vehicles are purchased um, with, used, with cars that have been used. And so uh, we are looking at the residual values of cars uh, being marked down, certainly gas powered cars, because that's where uh, that's the part of the market that's being absolutely swamped right now by the rental car companies. So um, uh, and now in we got uh, news from Daimler this week in their earnings report. Uh, uh, they give us some statistics on the early days of recovery in uh, China. So China's worst week uh, for auto sales was February 1st, and they were down 94%. As of last week, they're now up uh, about 12% on a year-over-year -year basis. So that was uh, roughly a three-month period. And, uh, and we're following uh, them, uh, uh, of course. So this would suggest that we could potentially start seeing year-over-year -year increases in auto sales in June. Uh, which would be, I think, uh, a lot sooner than, than uh, a lot of people are expecting. The other interesting point to note about the Chinese market is that wholesale uh, deliveries are up more than retail, which means that the dealers are, have confidence that their consumers are going to come back to buy cars. And one of the reasons for that may be uh, they don't want to take mass transit anymore. This actually could be a stimulant to car sales, both in um, China and perhaps in the U.S. Uh, so the coronavirus might be a stimulant uh, to to uh, auto sales in a way that many of us hadn't hadn't really thought about before. Um, and then the other uh, statistic that came out this week uh, was housing. Um, now. And, and we saw in the GDP report for the first quarter, uh, the most stunning note, number to me besides the inventory drawdown was that residential construction was up, I think it was 21%, 21%. And now that's, uh, that is at an annualized rate. Uh, and so housing was roaring before we got into, uh, into the crisis. And um, as if you've been watching uh, our stay of home videos, you'll, you'll uh, remember that forces in motion uh, before an exogenous shock like the coronavirus or like 9-11 uh, in uh, 2001 or like the portfolio insurance crisis Black Monday in 1987, forces in motion remain in motion uh, once the shock is over, and so we think that housing um, will probably be uh, a good example of this. We're already seeing from Zillow and Redfin uh, virtual home tours up 400 and 500 percent. Now, 
perhaps that's a low base, but there's a lot of interest out there in virtual tours of homes. Uh, uh, and we think this is, uh, again, going to lead to a lot of changes in the way that real estate uh, is purchased and sold going forward. Uh, so that's an interesting statistic. Also, uh, a very interesting statistic from Facebook uh, uh, reporting about uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, data for April. They're basically saying ad revenue has stabilized year over year for Facebook. Now, Facebook is gaining significant share from other uh, media, um, non-digital media, uh, so, but I don't think anyone expected such a discretionary uh, purchase for businesses to uh, to even be flat on Facebook for quite some time. Uh, now they're willing to advertise. That suggests some confidence in the future. Maybe, hey, I can get ahead of my competition by advertising now, and particularly on the direct response side, which has really taken off. Uh, so that's that's interesting. So I'll, I'll go back to this idea that uh, you know animal spirits will stir if the competition feels it can get an edge on uh, on on a company uh, and say the biggest companies out there, uh, then they're, they're uh, probably going to start running circles around those that are um, uh, more bureaucratic and not able to move as quickly. As far as the uh, markets, uh, we've had equities until the last couple of days. Uh, showing very nice gains. Um, and I think uh, this idea that maybe this is going to be a little more V-shaped than most economists were thinking is starting to get into the markets. Uh, we keep a close eye on treasury bonds, the ultimate flight to safety uh, security, the 10-year treasury bond. Uh, last week, it was about 60 basis points. This week, uh, it's ending the week at about 64 basis points. So um, we believe as this notion that, hey, the economy is going to recover, um, starts uh, proliferating out there, that there will be a shift from treasury bonds either into <clears throat> higher risk bonds or into equities. Uh, and uh, part of what we may be seeing in the equity market, the reason for its significant, uh, significant strength, and maybe some people have been surprised by it, uh, is because of an asset allocation shift from bonds to equities. Uh, we know that that's helping the high yield market as well. Uh, the, the collateralized loan obligation market is the one market that seems to be under some stress. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is the administration is not backstopping that. The Fed is not back, backstopping it. And I, I think the message there is, okay, you knew you were taking a lot of risk here. And it's particularly in the commercial real estate market that I think uh, we're seeing difficulties. And so the idea is, you knew you were taking a lot of risk here and, uh, and you're big boys, uh, so you deal with it. Now, uh, if, if something systemic were to surface out of that uh, part of the market, I'm sure the, the Fed and the administration would move in, uh, but I don't think we're seeing that, at least not yet. Um, what, what is interesting in terms of this notion of a, 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 an allocation shift from, from uh, bonds to equities is if you think of the discount rates we're dealing with, if we believe that interest rates are going to stay sub 2%, uh, that's the long-term treasury, um, and maybe uh, we get corporates, high gra investment grade, you know, maybe we'll get them back to 3%. Uh, the discount factors uh, that we're going to use when present valuing uh, uh, future cash flows are such that you know the the multiple structure of the market, especially for the longest duration assets, and I would put innovation in that category, especially innovation that's going to play out over the next five to ten years. Um, those those multiple structures, those valuations, should be well supported by that kind of dynamic. Um, and as even Warren Buffett has said, when he reflects on what has happened to Treasury bond yields, he, he's, you know, saying, hey, you know, this is 40 to 50 times earnings if you're doing a, a quote unquote PE ratio. 
and we know the earnings uh, that we know the earnings can't go anywhere. Uh, whereas when you're talking about equities and, you know, of course, consider the source, I would say this when you're talking about long duration equities, which involved, which involve risk and um, a, a long term time horizon, but could potentially lead to exponential growth tra tra trajectories. Uh, that that valuation uh, is is a very important consideration, uh, and so we do think that um, we do think that uh, multiples across the market have have good support. Now the question is, when will cyclicals or or the value part of the market really engage here? We've seen spurts of performance, uh, relative performance, but nothing sustained. And I think what's going on there is there is so much disruption taking place and it's not just because of the coronavirus, but because the coronavirus is accelerating other trends, other innovations that were in motion uh, and that now are going to gain traction at an accelerated rate. It's going to cause more trouble sooner than even we expected for uh, financial services companies, energy companies, of course, that's uh, clear. Clearly, the market understands that now. Auto companies, uh, the market understands uh, that as well. Uh, but uh, many of those are, and retail, of course, bricks and mortar, many of those are traditional value sectors. And uh, a value investor knows that its biggest risk long term is a value trap. What does a value trap mean? Is uh, It means that uh, val a value stock is cheap for a reason. It's going to lose its business. It's going to be disintermediated. It's going to be disrupted. And you, knew, you know we think digital wallets are going to do that in the financial services space, uh, electric vehicles, of course, and autonomous electric vehicles in the energy and traditional uh, auto space, uh, continued acceleration online for retail in, in, in that space. Uh, one of the so, so you have to be really careful when it comes to value, perhaps this time around more than in any other cycle that any of us have experienced. And that's because the last time we saw so much creative destruction in a value space or in the value space would have been in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when telephone, electricity and, and automobile were were the exponential growth uh, um uh, uh, the exponential growth trajectories. Uh, they were the long duration assets of the day and they bucked a lot of trends even during the depression and maybe because of the depression. Uh, so, but one of the, uh, one of the, the uh, market forces that we saw this week or week or indications that we saw was finally small cap is joining the party. Small cap from a relative performance point of view, relative to large caps, uh, had experienced a, a small increase, but then relapsed and uh, were at their lows relative to large caps. And this this week, they, they showed some life. This is good. We want the market to broaden out. And uh, small caps joining the part, party is, is a very good sign. Um, we would normally say that about the value space, and, and we do hope value, uh, the, the parts of the value market that are not going to be disrupted, we do hope they join the party. But value broadly defined, maybe it won't be so true this time. And uh, so I'll just uh, end on a note about innovation. Uh, we just discussed this in our brainstorming session today. And uh, one of the things I've been thinking about is, well, the 20% saving rate or 13% for March, potentially 20% for April, you know, that's, uh, you know, that, that's, that's dry powder from a business uh, point of view. Where's it going to go? And uh, we learned about um, in gaming uh, about a new trend that is taking off, maybe the next social platform, maybe may, may the next big social media platform that is going to scale enormously. And it has to do with uh, Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite is known for its battle royale games and uh, first person shooter games. And, um, 
And what we saw and what we've seen in this crisis is uh, there have been two concerts that that uh, uh, that uh, Fortnite has sponsored within uh, within the game. Uh, one was Marshmallow that attracted 10.7 million concurrent users. And the other one was uh, Astronomical, uh, w which uh, attracted, I think it was 12.3 million users. Uh, but if you counted the, the users that were watching it from Twitch and other streaming vehicles as well, it was roughly 15 million concurrent users. Uh, which isn't that far from the 19 million con concurrent viewers that we see during the average, or that we saw during the average World uh, uh, World Series game in 2019. So this is big business. So what did uh, Fort De Fortnite do this uh, this week? Uh, they had all of their first person shooters lay down their guns. And they invited them to an island for a party royale. Uh, so this could be where uh, a lot of digital natives are going to start hanging out for concerts. Uh, they can go visit uh, each other in cafes that have been maybe introduced in uh, in the various battle royale games. Uh, they can buy digital items from vending machines. Uh, so uh, we might see, uh, we might look back and say, wow, the coronavirus started a new social movement um, on, on Fortnite in this case, case, which could become a platform uh, for, for many social uh, uh, engagements and could become a, a platform for, for many developers uh, to develop too. So uh, we thought that was fun and um, uh, we're excited about uh, what we're going to see uh, out of that space. Uh, because as you know, uh, if you've been watching our research, we think this, uh, this gaming um, space is going to scale from a business point of view to be much bigger than music, it already is, uh, and, uh, and television in terms of the economics. Uh, so if you want to check out our research, um, our marketing team has just uh, relaunched our website, just did it this week. I think it was even yesterday. And, uh, you know, they've done a terrific job. I'm very proud of Sebastian, Caroline, uh, uh, Lisa, and, and Matt uh, for all they've done to, to make this happen during the coronavirus and I think you'll, it's a very pleasant experience, great user interface. And I think you'll enjoy um, going through some of our research uh, and also uh, tuning in to some of the podcasts with which we've featured on our site, uh, especially the ones uh, that our analysts have done, uh, which talk about which companies, how the world's going to change because of the coronavirus or how the innovation trends in place are going to gain traction uh, because of the coronavirus at a faster rate than they would otherwise. Uh, and, uh, and you'll get to know uh, our analysts a little bit more as well. So with that, um, I hope you have a lovely weekend. I think it's the weather is going to be nice. And uh, hopefully we can all go out and get some uh, fresh air and maybe exercise and uh, come back for to fight the good fight next week as well. Okay, so thanks so much. Bye.